everybody welcome to the channel um we are in orlando florida it is chilly down here today um hope the wind isn't too bad i hope it's not really blowing it and affecting the sound too bad um but what we're going to talk about today I'll, actually i want to tell you i woke up this morning seen a couple articles and uh i decided to do a video on it because uh, i think uh somebody dropped the ball on this one um we're going to talk about the new mustang gt500 and the new toyota supra uh, both those cars are highly anticipated cars coming up this uh, coming year. Been highly anticipated for years. <clears throat> Since they stopped producing the old Toyota Supra, I think it was in like 1998, um, that thing had the, you know, crazy 2JZ engine in it that could handle so much horsepower. Um, everybody's really kind of anticipated a new Supra coming out and it took forever to happen and now they have. Now the Mustangs have been being made for many, many years without stopping production or anything like that. But this GT500 is now a beast. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about both these cars a little bit. I'm gonna compare them, but it may not be exactly a fair comparison, but we know both these cars are gonna be very expensive. I have estimates that I've found on the internet of the pricing of these two vehicles, and we're gonna compare that. But like we all know, uh, those prices will be marked up by the dealers. How much, who knows? <clears throat> Could this be the first, um, you know, produced Mustang that hits $100,000 straight out of the factory? That's highly possible at some dealerships. I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, over 700 horsepower, this thing could hit, you know, uh, $100,000 fairly easy. So uh, let's get on with some of the comparisons. So, like I said, the Toyota Supra is expected to come to the market at $55,000. Um, you know, that's a lot of money, but with the dealer markup, who knows exactly how high that will actually be. Could it be 70,000? I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that at all because I know these cars are gonna be highly anticipated. They're gonna be hard to get to start with. So who knows what the markup's gonna be on those. I mean, both these cars are just gonna be a extremely high markup from the dealer. You know, they can tell you what they think they're, they're gonna cost at the bat <clears throat> and what the retail price should be, and then dealers are gonna mark them up from there. But the Supra is supposedly gonna be uh, MSRP at starting at $55,000, and the GT500, is the same thing at $70,000 is going to be its MSRP. So, you know, um, that's a big chunk of change right there. So are you getting your money's worth for those two cars? Let's dig into that a little bit. So the Toyota Supra will have a 3.0 liter twin scroll turbo inline six cylinder. It's a BMW engine. Now, most of us know that it's, they've, they're putting a BMW engine in that. And my feelings on that is they should have stuck with some form of the 2JZ engine. A lot of you are gonna say, well, that's an outdated engine. It may be, but that engine is very sought after even today, decades later. I mean, two decades later, that engine is still highly sought after because of the modifications that you can do to that engine. So it may be outdated. Maybe they could have tweaked it a little bit, made it a little bit more, you know, updated in of an engine but do some form of the iconic 2jz and turbocharge it just like they did back then so many companies are starting to turbocharge vehicles now ford you know everybody's turbocharging the engine now so why would they just not update that put a bigger turbo on it and try to get like 500 550 horsepower out of the factory i mean you've got you know stock mustangs now hitting 450 or four something you know I mean, just the regular GTs. So why would you not at least try to get up to that aspect of the market where you're hitting 450 horsepower and compete with those cars? Now, maybe they're trying to compete with the 370Z, maybe. But at $55,000 starting point, that's a poor um, try at competing with a 370Z that may start out about $30,000. I mean, you're $25,000 away from your competition if that's what you're going for. I don't see that that's the competition. <clears throat> Even at 55,000, it's hard for me to say that the Mustang is a competition when you can buy a fully loaded Mustang for like $45,000. I mean, you're still $10,000 away from, you know, a Mustang with 100 more horsepower. So I just I just don't know where they're where they're going at in the market with that. But let's get on with the Mustang GT500. You have the 5.2 liter of V8 supercharged engine, and um, it actually has a 2.65 liter blower producing 12 PSI. That is massive, massive. Now what does that get you? 
it gets you over 700 horsepower. Yes, this car is quite a bit more expensive. We'll, we'll have to see where dealer markup is. Ford really marks up some of their cars sometimes, but I think Toyota's really gonna mark up this Super too, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but I think they're really gonna mark it up too. So let's just see who has the larger markup, I guess. But 12 PSI and over 700 horsepower. The, the BMW engine only gets you 335 horsepower. I mean, you're getting twice the horsepower in the Mustang. It is incredible. I mean, it's just, God. I mean, 700 horsepower out of a stock vehicle is gonna be amazing. I mean, we can all agree with that. It's just gonna be amazing. I'm sure these will be limited runs. They'll be hard to get, but if you can get your hands on one, it's gonna be incredible. So let's get on to what those numbers mean. So the zero to 60 in the Supra is gonna be at 4.1 seconds. So $55,000 doesn't even break four seconds. I mean, I, I don't know. I just feel like Toyota might've dropped the ball a little bit on this one. 4.1 seconds at $55,000 seems like a lot of money. Maybe the collectability of the car and the future value of the car may make up for it. But for me, that just seems like it's a little bit steep. Whereas the Mustang gets you zero to 60 in under three seconds. Now, when you're, you're talking about under three seconds, let's, let's put this into perspective. You take a Nismo Nissan GTR, which is nicknamed Godzilla, and it does zero to 60 in like 2.8 seconds, and they're like $170,000. So now you're getting a car that the base price is 70 grand, and it's starting to compete with that, you know, 2.8 seconds of a $170,000 car. I mean, you're getting into supercar performance when you're talking about numbers like that because the Nissan GTR, the Godzilla, has actually outran a ton of supercars and that's how it got its nickname. So now for 70 grand base price asking for markup, you're getting into those kind of figures. That's a heck of a bargain in my book. Now y'all may think differently, I don't know, but in my book, that's a heck of a bargain. Next. They both, uh, they both run uh, Michelin Pilots uh, or Michelin tires. The uh, Super runs Michelin Pilot Sports. Let me get that right. And the GT500 runs Michelin Sport S4 tires. Michelin makes good tires. It's probably about six and one, half a dozen other. Uh, both those tires are gonna be great. I forgot to mention this just a second ago. The quarter mile for the um, GT500 is supposed to be less than 11 seconds. I didn't see the quarter mile time for the Supra in the article I read, but the GT500 is supposed to be less than 11 seconds. That is crazy on a stock car. Now remember, this is a production car. This isn't some supercar. These will be made at a factory. I mean, I guess all cars are made at a factory, but this is a Ford production car. You'll be able to just go to the Ford dealership and buy this vehicle. It's not like you have to go to a specialty dealership like Ferrari or Lamborghini or something like that and buy this vehicle. It's a Ford vehicle and you're going to get um, a quarter mile in under 11 seconds. Amazing. I mean, that's just, that's just amazing to me that you're going to be a 10 second car right out of the, right out of the factory. And there's a lot of internals on the GT500 that are Fords and stuff like that. What this car is kind of reminding me of, but with a lot more horsepower is the O3s and O4 Co uh, Cobra Mustang Terminators. Those internals were forged. Now this does have the aluminum block I read. Um, the Terminators did have a cast iron block and they can handle upwards of a thousand horsepower. But this car reminds me a lot of that. And with the um, forged internals, it should be able to handle a lot of horsepower um, and just make tons of horsepower, tons of torque and just be unbelievable when it's all said and done. Now they're both sporting Brembo brakes. You would imagine at this price at, you know, 55 and $70,000, Brembo brakes would be a must. And they are, they are sporting Brembo brakes. And you know, I've owned Brembo brakes on several of my vehicles and those things will just stop you on a dime, it seems like. So Brembo brakes is a must when you're talking about cars of this kind of money. And you would expect that and you are getting that. Now I wanna talk about one thing a little bit that really made me want to um, make this video. Uh, styling. So if you all have not seen pictures, I'll try to add them to the end of this video. And I'm sure we all have, but I'll still add them to the end of the Mustang GT500 and of the Toyota Supra. In my opinion, the Toyota Supra dropped the ball. I've always been 
a 90s model Toyota Super fan. I almost bought two of them. I kicked myself over and over again for not buying those vehicles. Um, I bought several 300s and I've owned 37 cars and I just never did buy one of those and that is the only vehicle I ever really wanted that I did not purchase. I don't want a new Toyota Supra. I don't like how it looks. That is just my opinion. You may really like the Toyota Supra. You may like the styling and that's perfectly fine because it's your money and you're the one that's going to be spending that $55,000 plus on this vehicle. But in my opinion, the 90s model still looks better and is more iconic than the newer 2020 model will ever be. I don't like the styling of it. Um, the interior kind of dropped the ball a little bit for me. Um, I just think Toyota missed it with this vehicle. I think it had so much potential and it was so much highly anticipated and maybe that's the problem. The anticipation of the vehicle um, when you finally got to see it uh, made it seem less appealing than what you thought it was going to be. That does happen when you have to anticipate something so long, sometimes that does happen. I, I don't know, maybe that's it. But the Mustang GT500 is amazing. That car looks like a beast. Um, just rolling up in that car just screams intimidation for other vehicles. You're automatically going to know that's a GT500. The carbon fiber wheels on that car is amazing. Koenigsegg makes carbon fiber wheels on their car and Ford is putting carbon fiber wheels on a Mustang GT500. So just the wheels on that car is just an awe factor in itself. Um, the front the fascia of this vehicle and the and the grill and stuff like that, that big wide opening just looks like a huge mouth that's just gonna eat its competition. I mean, I think Ford hit a home run with this GT500 in styling alone, not even considering the performance, just the styling of this car, it's just a home run for Ford. Now you all know I'm not a huge Ford fan and that's what we're gonna get into right now, the reliability factor. I think both these cars, um, I think Ford, uh, has potential to make good vehicles. Um, you know, I hear a lot of people that don't have problems like I did on my channel. I've got a couple videos that are, one's over 220,000 views, the other one's approaching 200,000 views, and I get a lot of comments. Both those are about Tundras and, and um, F-150s, and there's a ton of people on there that say they have F-150s um, that have never had any issues at all. Um, no issues at all. And so I guess they do have, you know, some good vehicles out there. I just did not get either one of mine. Um, so I think this vehicle has potential. Do I think people will drive this Ford um, GT500 lot? No, I think they're gonna set it up and I think they're gonna collect it and down the road, I think they're gonna make a ton of money when they resell it at Barrett Jackson's auction. That's what I think. But um, there's gonna be a few people that drive this car. There'll be a few people take it to the track and get numbers off of it and stuff like that. And I applaud those people for spending that kind of money on a car and actually driving it because I think that's what Ford made this vehicle for is to drive or they wouldn't have put those kind of numbers into that vehicle. That's just my personal opinion. But the, the Supra, uh, the reliability on it as well, BMW has never been known for its reliability. You know, you can buy BMW 3 Series convertibles and stuff really cheap once they get about 100, 115,000 miles on them, and there's a reason for that. It's because BMW is usually noted, if you go online, to have a lot of issues later on, and those issues will cost you a lot of money. Um, will that BMW engine still cost BMW money? I would guess yes. Will it be as reliable as the 2JZ Toyota engine? I'm gonna say, no. So in reliability aspects, both of them, I want to see um, how reliable they'll actually be. Will we ever see those numbers? I doubt it. I think both these cars are going to be collector's cars. I think people's going to buy these, hoard them up, save them for 15 or 20 years, and then we're going to see them on Barrett Jackson uh, breaking the $150,000, $200,000 mark, especially for the GT500. Who knows how high that'll go? That's my personal opinion. And that's just how I feel. I just don't think we'll ever see if either one of these cars are just that reliable because nobody will ever drive them long enough to find out. So that's my opinions, comments, and concerns about both these cars. Um, let me know your opinions and which one you think you like better, which one you think looks better, and which one you'd buy if you had the $100,000 to spend on it. Let me know that in the comments. I appreciate you watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. See you next time. Also, one last thing, I am still on vacation. As you can see, I'm still in Orlando, Florida. 
Um, if I don't reply to your comments over the next couple days, um, I'll try to get as many of them as I can, but I may be at a theme park, I may be here or there, and I may not be able to get all of them in the next couple days, but I will try to catch up on those comments uh, when I get back home. So uh, there again, please leave your comments uh, in the comment section of what you think about these two vehicles, and I uh, appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.